I've got some exciting news today, folks. I just got confirmation from our friends in Science Bubble Golf that it is snowing below 60 degrees latitude for the first time since ascending, which is amazing news. I was also able to briefly speak with our very own Miss Olivia, who is working on Science Bubble Golf. She says hi to her friends and family, and a special hello to mom and dad. She loves you. We interrupt this scheduled broadcast for a breaking news update from the Sticky Buttons podcast. Hey everybody, this is Blake. This is Brandon. And this is the Sticky Buttons podcast. It's a <laughs> <chill> video game <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I wasn't remembering. It's still it's still very early for us. Yeah, is this the is this the second one with the the second it, one with the It name? might be the third. It's like the yeah, it's like the yeah. second we're we're still getting the intro ready. We're we're gonna look back into putting it into the first episode. It's a it's a whole ordeal, but we're loving it. We're figuring it out every step of the way. Yeah, honestly, making making a podcast is a little bit more work, a little bit more work than I thought it was gonna be. Hell but yeah. I have enjoyed all of it. I especially enjoy getting to talk to you about video games, man. Likewise. Likewise, let's get into this episode, man. We got a lot to Definitely. talk about Nintendo November. I know that you have been putting your Switch to work, man. You really have. You just texted me the other day. You caught a shiny Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I, well, so here's the thing. I think I caught a shiny Pokemon because it, like, it was like sparkling. And then when I caught it, I got some wants for it, too. Is that considered a shiny Pokemon or is that different? It might be. Um, there is a simple way to find out if it's shiny, though. When it showed up, did it, like, like shine? It literally, like, shines. It did, like, like, in the wild area. I don't know, like, it, I haven't looked at it since I caught it, though. When you were battling it, I mean. Oh. Was there any animation of it, like, shining? Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't. Maybe I didn't catch one then. What Pokemon was it? Uh, it was that. It was, like, Wobbuffet, I think. Wobbuffet. It okay. Very cool looking Pokemon, that blue blob thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of looks like a teardrop, and then it's got <laughs> yeah. like an inverse teardrop, and then it's got like four balls at his feet, and then like yeah. a funky beaver ta tail. <laughs> and it's actually, if you watch like the, the shows, Wobbuffet was it would go around with Team Rocket and do all sure. sorts of uh, I didn't know that pull all sorts of antics. It is a psychic, it's a psychic type. I've been I've been thinking about adding it to my adding it to my team, but my my team is uh, it is pretty stacked right now. I'm actually oh I had the I finally got the the evolution of Thwacky. Oh, Rillaboom. 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 How do you how say you, that? How do you like Rillaboom? Rillaboom. Yeah. I like it, man. I like the animations. He like hits the like it changed like the animations for the the different moves too, which I was really about. Yeah, I really like the animations for Rillaboom. I also have Rillaboom on my team. Yeah, I, I love the hair that he has, or like the vines. I'm not sure if, if it's hair or vines. I think, it, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's hair as vines. But actually, I I don't know if I'm going to keep him on my team, man. Really? You're going to yeah. oh, get rid of Rillaboom? What, what gender is your Rillaboom, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I'm not sure. Okay, because I would love to breed Rill Rillaboom babies if I, because I have a male. If you have a female, we can put if them I, in the daycare. If I do, I would totally treat you that. I love breeding Pokemon and just getting the right nature and the right, um, you know, assortment like of the stats. Eevee. Oh yeah, you're somewhat familiar with it. So I've like, I have looked into it and I've tried to get into it so hard. Like, I feel like it's something that I'd be so about, but I just feel like I can never quite figure out how to do it and i feel like i can never like get an answer from like the online forums and i feel like i i feel like i have to ask somebody and i feel like i've never had anybody to ask how do you do it man <laughs> do you want to break EV, it down for me ev trading um i have like a very rough like sketch of how it's done i only do it i only do certain things like there's a lot of of practices that consist of ev training but what i like to do and what i can speak to is breeding your pokemon so that they are of a certain nature so if you have an adamant natured pokemon i believe their special attack stat and their attack stats increase at a rate that is just you know much much better compared to all of the other natures and 
if you, you know, you chain certain Pokemon, meaning you fight Wobbuffets, you um, bring up the EV or like the potential of a stat to increase every time you level up um, more and more. So instead of like plus three on the special attack when you level up, it'll be like plus seven for the stat. And basically, EV training allows you to get these Pokemon that not only are, you know, bred, they're just bred to like perform really well competitively because they have these really high, these really high stats so that when they use these special moves, they're likely going to one hit KO. So how do you, how do you increase the chances of it being like a higher EV, I guess, or like increase the chances of you getting those higher SPs? So by breeding is, is one of those ways to really make sure that you, you start off with like a good foundation, but you could really EV train any Pokemon, you know, it's, it's just really consistent. Is that just like doing the same Poke, like fighting the same Pokemon over and over again? Yeah, because like certain Pokemon, when you defeat them, they uh, boost a certain stat, you know, they, if you defeat 50, 50 Rillabooms, their defense stat will, will be you know, increased compared to all the other stats, it'll be increased a lot more. And yeah, it's the name of the game. Well, uh, I'm still confused, but <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's a very very rough sketch, and it's something that like I yeah you you gotta just get it from somebody who knows how to really do it. I have a friend that really really knows how to do that stuff and can probably speak to it. We should probably get him on the podcast. Yeah, dude, I'd be all he about would, it, man. He would love to get on something like this. We should, he would love to have a platform. I'd love to. I'd love to let him have it, man. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm just so intrigued by it. And like, as somebody that like loves math, I think you feel probably feel the same way. It's just like building the team and like getting those stat increases. Like that's just so cool and so fun. That I would be very like interested to see how like how exactly you do it. But I feel like it's got to be a big time commitment. It definitely is. It's like with anything in in life, there's the, that <laughs> opportunity cost. Yeah, definitely. And as somebody that probably doesn't want to train competitively, or like, I actually, I'm, I almost guaranteed I would never have the time to, to play competitively, but it just still interested me, even like, at like a, a casual interest level. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. I'll tell you that much. Just putting your Pokemon up at that level and just seeing where you stand. I think it's important to do that every once in a while. Yeah. I, the reason that like I was like really look, I actually, so I, I normally, just because I have a pretty, I feel like I have a pretty busy personal life. I don't really get the chance to commit like a whole weekend to like one game. But I, boy howdy, did I play Pokemon this weekend. I, I committed almost like my whole Sunday to playing. And I, I realized that my Slowpoke, who I am, I'm really in love with, they, they have an off special attack. Like my physical attack is almost 20 stat points better than my special attack that's horrible which is really bad and i haven't seen another slow poke and i'd really like to i was like thinking i'm like man like maybe the one that i got just had like low stats like and then i was like maybe i should look into evolving it but then i, I found that in order to evolve it into a slow bro you have to buy the expansion pack mm. i i was like you know i like i definitely wanted to buy the expansion pack but i was kind of like i kind of want to beat the game first yeah you definitely should yeah, where where are you at in the in the game? Man, I'm up to the fifth badge. I which, just, which one is this? Is it the fighting one? Or the fighting one's four, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's just the one after all the after the fairy. Yeah, I haven't gotten to the fairy yet. So I think I think it's I think is it that old woman? Is that the fairy yeah. type? I think that I fight her next because I've seen her twice and I just got to the point where BD got kicked out of the gym challenge. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you're not that far behind me. You're pretty close. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm at a point though, where it's like, I really, I'm really feeling like my team is underleveled, which mm. I, which so honestly, like, is, is very interesting because normally I feel like I just grind it out and my team is like so beefy, but this, like this time I feel like I'm, even though like I'm taking my time with it, I feel like I'm really focusing on like getting like Pokemon in my Pokedex. And I've also found out that I don't think that you get XP points when you fight Dynamax dens. You don't get XP for that, do you? No, not really. But you do get those like XP, XP. point things where you get to yeah. like that kind of makes up for it. I love using those because you get to like really allocate it to a certain Pokemon. 
Yeah, I've got a lot of that stuff right now. I love I using it. It's a great way to fill up your Pokédex, like a Pokémon you typically wouldn't use on your team. You can use that on it and evolve it and then just put it back in the box. That's a good, that's a good way to look at it. I think that this Pokédex has like 400 some in it. I've never completed a Pokédex, and I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't want to commit to it. I'm feeling a little bit... Uh, a little bit shy, but I think I think I'm on a good track. I've seen like 180, and I think I've caught over 100. So, wow, that's better than I'm. I've caught only like 87, and I've seen like 100 and something. I don't know. I've been very selective about the Pokemon that I have on my team, kind of like you have. I've just been looking for dragon types. I've always yeah. just I've love I love the dragon type Pokemon. I have lots of pleasure collecting them. <laughs> yeah, I'm dude. I'm in like such a weird spot. For for those of you that this doesn't mean anything to, when I say the last Pokemon game that I played was Pokemon Pearl, that's a Generation Four, and this um, Sword and Shield is Generation Eight. So that means that like effectively, I haven't played in like four generations. So a lot has changed since the last one that I played, and there's a lot of new Pokemon that I want to add to my team. So I'm like also like really trying um, some Pokemon out. And I'm also like, I, there's just like so many that I like want to try out, but it's like, I don't even, I don't even really know just because I haven't yeah. seen them. But I am like, I did actually, I made a list of everything that is different since generation four. And this really like, it's quite a bit. And I was kind of surprised like once I like sat down and like wrote it all down. So one thing that's different that I noticed is TMs are, are reusable now. So that yeah. is cool. Um, there's no HMs. So previously in like older generations, they would have like HMs, which are, so TMs are technical machines and HMs are hidden machines. And HM like, like wouldn't be able to delete it. And then, like it was so like you would put it on like a burner Pokemon, but then like like it's so like one was like Rock Smash and like you would like use Rock Smash to like get to the next area, but like you had to like defeat a gym in order to get that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So like just not having that aspect of it, like I really I'm really digging that and like instead of like letting you progress to the next area, they have like Team Yell, and yeah. they, won't, they won't let you pass, which is kind of funny. Um, so then they also have camping which is cool. You have camping and cooking. So if you are like, let's say like you're in the middle of a route and one of your Pokemon just took like a big hit, like you could like give them potions or you could just like go camping. And you could like, this happened to me like one time I was like, well, my Pokemon are kind of taking a hit. So I'm just gonna, like, I could go back to the uh, Pokemon, but I'll, Pokemon, but I'll just like go camping. And I just like went camping, like cooked up some curry and like my Pokemon, like got their health back and they get XP for that. So I was like, that's like a win-win. And they also have the wild areas, which are super dope. Um, oh, you also get XP from catching Pokemon. You can also like play with your Pokemon and then there's Dynamaxing and then there's Rivals and there's the gym challenge, which is super awesome and clothes and Poke jobs. And then like in the Poke Center, there's like, like you can like, Re, like like redo your nickname and you can like have pokemon like learn other moves and whoa it just feels like <laughs> it's just so much <laughs> so much you could really take your time with it and, and just explore it. yeah definitely. it's a world to explore and and they're adding more it's not done and that's what's really exciting yeah. about this new generation you know but on on that on that note um let's take this opportunity to see anything else nintendo have you played anything else besides pokemon um like as far as like in the past week yeah uh no but i am i think i'm gonna jump back into breath of the wild because i played pokemon for like five minutes today and i was like yeah this is uh not it i'm kind of burnt out like <laughs> like in like a low like a low stakes way i was just like i just spent like all weekend playing this and i don't really want to play it today yeah, man, I've been on that same kind of frequency, just a little burnt out with the Pokemon, and, and uh, picked up Minecraft again on my Switch. Ooh, that's and, awesome, um, dude! I think you should get it. We should, we should have like a sticky buttons world. Oh, I mean, that'd be that'd cool. Be really exciting. We could. Is there a way that we could make a world that the listeners could get into? I'm pretty sure it could be like a realm 
where people join and just mess around the sticky buttons realm. I'd be into that, man. So, so I guess if you, if you would like to, if you want us to do that, you can hit us up at our new Gmail, which is the sticky buttons pod at gmail.com. Definitely hit us, hit us there. You can also hit us up on the Instagram, the IG. We have one of those. I don't know if we'll make any, any others. I think I also made, I also made a YouTube and a Twitch account, but I don't know if, I mean, like, hopefully we'll be able to utilize those, but I don't see us utilizing those like at the moment, but yeah, if you, the listeners would really like that or that kind of content from us, just let us know and we'll make a, make an effort to, to do that. I think that like we mentioned, we wanted to, to battle and do like a Pokemon battle. That'd yeah. Be fun. That'd be some good content. <clears throat> you know, and, and hopefully we can eventually do these in person someday. Yeah, um, yeah, we are, in case you were wondering, we are doing this, uh, all, we're doing it remotely, and we're doing it over Zoom. Sometimes it's kind of hard to, to tell uh, when the other person's talking, it's also kind of like hard to like feed off each other too, because it's just a little bit different, you know, in the virtual world that we live in. Hopefully someday we'll be able to do it in the future, in person. Yeah. All we can do now is just cross our fingers and keep moving forward. Yeah, do the best we can. But Minecraft, dude. So I I really, like two weekends ago, I was like, all I want to do is play Minecraft. But then I like I was like busy and I, I didn't have the time. But I have it on my laptop. I don't have it on my Switch. Mm. And I'm just like, I'm, I guess I'm like wishing that because I already bought it, even though like I already bought it on my PC. I wish I could just like download it. I mean, I know that's not the case. I'm just, it's like wishful thinking that I could just like download it on my Switch, you know? Sucks. Microsoft, do better. Yeah, do better. But actually, they, I think that they might be kind of trending towards that way. Don't give them any consolation. They don't do their- <laughs> They really don't. They're a corporation. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully one day it will, you'll just be able to buy it once and download it on all your devices. But I don't think that's going to happen. Speaking of games that uh, you might want on multiple devices, I fucked around and bought the new Black Ops this weekend. Cold War. Or, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I was like, did I say the right thing? Yeah, the new Call of Duty. When did that come out? It came out on Friday. Ooh, I was thinking about buying it for the PlayStation, like the seventy dollar version. Yeah, so they have a they have a, a version where you can pay ten extra dollars, and then you can it's like cross platform or yeah. like cross gen is what it's called. So you you <laughs> ended up getting a new console, you could just download it. That reminds me, my friend Mark, who actually got the PS Five um, on release day, was telling me to get it, but I was like, I'll see if I get it. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm kind of salty with PlayStation right now. I couldn't get my hands on a console, and um, I just I can't even look at my PlayStation right now. Mm, I can't. I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> I can't. I'm just focused on the on my studies as I should be. Yeah, you definitely should be, man. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of excited um, for the new year. I mean, they don't like one thing like that's that's always good when consoles come out. It's like you don't have to buy them immediately. Because they don't really have any games that are exclusive to it right now. Yeah. So you could take take consolation in that, I guess, that you're fine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, won't, you won't be missing out on anything. You won't be able to have uh, – you won't be able – you're not missing out on any, like, groundbreaking experiences. But I did hear that the – I don't know if you've heard about this or if your your buddy Mark said anything to you. I heard that the, the game that, it, like, it comes with is really cool. So okay. it, like – it like I guess I guess the PlayStation Five comes with like a game pre-downloaded on it, or maybe not pre-downloaded, but it like comes with the console, and I guess it like teaches you how to use like the the new controller and stuff like that. Is it Astro's Playground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to see what that is. I've heard that a lot of people have said that that's really good, which it's just like a like a demo, pretty much of how like the the techno or like a demo of the tech. I guess is a good way to say it. Did you try and get your hands on it at all? Um, no. I, the, <laughs> I mean, we're we're kind of coming close to the end of the year here, and I gotta gotta buy plane tickets to see my family, and gonna have to get a new phone. So I'm kind of like 
I guess I could put off getting a new phone, but I mean, like, regardless, there there aren't any to buy right now, so yeah, you can't really. Get, I mean, like, as, I mean, like, you could. I think like it might be different when this this episode comes out, but like at the moment, was it November sixteenth? I don't think you can. If I mean, if you don't already have one, like you can't, or if you don't already have one pre-ordered, I don't think you can buy one anywhere. I mean, unless you're willing to pay like nine hundred dollars on StockX and like twelve hundred bucks on Amazon. Yeah, they. Yeah, you could you could go to eBay. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not that desperate. I don't. Feel, I don't like I said, I mean, like I don't think there are any. There are no games that I'm like. I don't feel like I'm missing out. I guess is a good way to say that. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like you're missing out? I definitely do feel like I'm missing out, just because. I have a bunch of friends that are coming from Xbox. They're leaving behind the Xbox ones. and uh, I am too, my friends. And it's exciting. It's exciting to have us all back together. I'm excited to be in those parties. The antics are about to be crazy. <laughs> they, they can only be amplified now. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited. My friend group does it. We kind of just hop on like a FaceTime audio call and just add people just because. I mean, the cross-platform chats are just trash. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. But I think that I think it's not going to realistically, I don't think it's going to be until 2021 that I get one. Do you want to hear about the new zombies, man? You got to play. Yeah, dude, I, I got to play them. I'm so that's exciting. If you I guess I'm just going to give give a little advice. If you get Cold War. If you get the new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, just jump right into zombies. Don't even fuck with multiplayer. Because you're, you're going to have trash loadouts and you're, then I think you, I don't think you can customize your own loadout to like level four. I just like jumped right into hardcore team deathmatch and it took me like an hour, hour and a half. Maybe not. No, it, it took me like an hour to get like to level four. Maybe not. I don't even know. It, it feels like it took forever. I mean, like, just cause like you're just like using like the, the trash loadouts that they give you. And then you have to like, you start at like level like zero and all the guns, but you also like you can level those guns up in zombies so just jumping into zombies will like you'll be able to like level up to like four and no problem and you might and then like from there you can like have like one or two guns that you can like start leveling up because i mean like i don't know for me personally i just like it really just irks my girt um (laughs) what (laughs) you know it's funny my girlfriend hates that i say that i don't know where the fuck i started saying it but I guess, um, I guess it's made up. I guess I fucking made it up. I don't know. But it just grinds my, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was it? Irks my girt. <laughs> it was so random. Uh, I was actually talking to my girlfriend about that today. She, we couldn't remember what it is that I was saying. Cause I, I guess I said it like for like one month and then I stopped because she was like, you gotta stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like later today it'll just come to you and it just came to me right then <laughs> there we go <laughs> uh, just actually, i'm gonna right text there. her really quick because i feel like i'm gonna forget that <laughs> during the podcast dude i saw a tweet that said no not a tweet it was, it was on snapchat and and i like snapchat i'm not a huge proponent of social media but the reason i like snapchat is because it's very personal yeah, let's just leave it at that. And yes, someone was like, this new Cold War is better than Black Ops 2. And I was like, man, that's a great... I loved Black Ops 2. And these are the same developers. So they've really upped themselves, it seems like, for the next gen. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I might fuck around and just go download the PS4 version, the, the $70 one. Because I, I, I see that... I just googled it. The pro- there is cross progression, so yeah. I think it, is it cross gen? Is it, or yeah. are we saying cross progression like between zombies and multiplayer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you're if you're playing in zombies, you can pretty much level up your multiplayer enough to like get sights. Because what I was saying and multiplayer, said, right? Yeah, yeah. So what I was saying in before I got distracted by irks my cur, which fuck that. <laughs> um, <laughs> That if you, so like I was just like playing multiplayer and I just get fucking doinked from across the map from somebody that had like a scope and I had my fucking iron sights. And I was, I was a little bit like, you know what, don't love that. But um, yeah, so 
advice if you just download it. Just go right into zombies. Like you don't even need to, to mess around with the multiplayer until you get get to Yeah, just just wait until you have like your sights and like maybe like a like an undergrip or something. I mean like you can do whatever, but yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get into that multiplayer. I really enjoy Treyarch's like take on multiplayer on on Call of Duty. It's been a while since I've touched a first person shooter, but if I've always said if I'm gonna touch a first person shooter, it's it's gonna be a Treyarch one. Just because yeah. I have an intimate relationship with like the developers um, and like the stories that they've told through the campaign um, and the Easter eggs with zombies and the zombies storytelling as well and. I don't know. They just have some great creative minds, and and they've executed very well. I feel like in certain certain avenues. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they've done this time. Yeah. And if you, I mean, if you like that, you're gonna love these zombies because there's only, so there's only one map right now, and it's like a new modern take on the first map, like the OG. You know, Kino Der Toten. Uh, not that one. The oh, one from the okay. like, World of War. Dude, I wish, have, man. Oh, man. If they, fucking fit. if they have that, I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, I don't see how they're, I don't see how they can't have that. I mean, who knows? They might not, but I think, I definitely think they're going to add that. DLC. Um, one of my friends was, was speculating that they're going to add it, um, a new zombies map with every season. What do you mean? Like, you know how they have like seasons for like Fortnite and like that a season, um, like a 50, 60 day season, um, in modern warfare. Oh, okay. And they're 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 thinking that like after that they're gonna do a new zombies map but yeah i mean it could be paid D- dlc it might just be dlc but for the moment like just getting into a fresh new zombies is, is cool to me and it is hell yeah it is cool they're um you have to like enter the anomaly is quote unquote what it's called if you i mean what is that so <laughs> basically when you you turn the power on and then after you turn the power on you can it's like kind of like linking the teleporter, but like you just have to like turn on the anomaly. Right. And so you basically turn on the two computers and then you go into the anomaly and the anomaly is just like, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you like phase in and out, um, and like tighten the Titanfall universe. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Do you want to go download it right now? <laughs> yes. Cause I yeah, know dude. I'm going to be here for a minute. So I might yeah, definitely. Well. Yeah. Just go and go run and do that. Get that started. Yeah, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> um, so yeah, you like enter the anomaly, and it's kind of like kind of like phasing in and out. But there's like these like cool like like jellyfish looking things, and they're like kind of hanging out. It's like really cool. And there's also like this like boss guy. Um, I don't really know what he's what his name is. He's got like a name, but you like fuck him up, and then after you kill him, you like split it in two. He like splits in two. It's dope. You okay, bro? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> we can we can uh, count this as like a little break. Yo, check out this monkey um, on Instagram. He's like he's like in a tree. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see it at first. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so are you gonna buy the cross gen one? Yeah, I just bought it. Nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's cool, man. I'm about it. I'm excited to talk to you more about it, too. We could honestly even play tonight if you want. It's cross-gen? If you get the, like, the 79 one. They do have a version where it's, like, cross-gen. Is that the one that you got? I'm trying to find the one that's cross- Oh, I see it. It's 89.99. They should. I thought it was, like, 79.99. Really? Maybe they brought their tax in? You're telling me they're taxing, Blake? Maybe it's different for Microsoft. I didn't get it because I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch um, consoles. You know, so oh, you're playing sw- on the Switch? No. Oh, I was about to. I was about to- <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm playing on on the Xbox, but I'm gonna switch. At, I'm gonna switch to PlayStation. Okay, I can. I see the cross gen bundle where it's the you get Cold War for the PS4, and then you get it for the PS5, and then yeah, that's. I think that's what I need. I'm just gonna get that. We should definitely get And that then, we, then we can play. We can play tonight. We could play tonight. All right. I'm adding it to the BART. The what? The cart. Sorry. Oh, God. I thought you said BART. I was like, BART. That's, that's, a bad, that's a bad habit of mine. That's like irk my girt. 
It's fucking awful. I feel ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started? Uh, it's like a it's like a virus now. It's spreading. Fuck, dude. I I hope I didn't just release that onto the world. I think you you have. Oh no. Hashtag <laughs> irk my girt. Uh, I feel like I feel like there's no way that I I made that up. I feel like I mean maybe I did, but I'm fucking looking up to see if I can get a PlayStation Five right now. Oh, dude, Best Buy is sold out right now. On what? Uh, PlayStation Fives. You know, honestly, it's. Are you really checking right now? Yeah. You're downloading the game. I figure I might as well check. (laughs) An eye for an eye. Oh, I'm just looking at it. It looks so big, man. Do you. Be honest with me. Do you like the way it looks? What looks? The PS5. The PS5? I mean, it it is what it is. It's the first iteration of it. I know they're going to drop probably the PS5 Pro in a bit. So it is what it is, you know? It's it's the guts that I like. That's true. <laughs> that is true. I love that you said it like that, the guts. It really is though. I was I was watching an ad for Microsoft's new console and that's all they were showing. They were advertising was like the twelve teraflops of power and like all the all the good stuff. And I feel like that that's how you should be advertising to, to the gaming community because at the end of the day these are just pieces of technology that do have a life you know they they have a life of and you use it and that life gets shortened so you know you just it is what it is i like how marquez brownlee in his video where he covers the ps5 he he says it's like compared to a pc um it's actually a great investment for 500 bucks because it's going to be relevant for a couple years right oh yeah for sure and it has you know, pretty similar specs, maybe not like the graphics of a PC, but pretty similar, similar usage. I think it's a great investment. Yeah, definitely. Long story short. Well, I hate to, I hate to say it, but there is a, it looks like there, there's one option that we could do. Um, we could add it to our registry if you want to get married. <laughs> That's yeah. <clears throat> That's always an option. Just go for it. All right, I think I'm ready to get back. We're back. Awesome. Awesome. Loving that Carhartt tea, by the way. <laughs> Carhartt pocket tea. Yeah, dude. I have, I, so I lived in the Midwest almost my whole life, and uh, I didn't buy Carhartt, put off buying the Carhartt, and then uh, I got out here to New York, and I was like, man, I just need some regular plain tees and i don't need nothing fancy yeah so see, i went, went, to to a, car. went to do a bass pro shop and hooked myself up i think i got i got three car hearts it was it was a nice change of pace because i mean like they are like i mean they're not like cheap like they definitely last um but comparatively to the the stuff that i could buy in new york it is very uh, normally priced I guess to say the least. Jumping back into it, folks, we lost each other. The Wi-Fi, it broke up. A lot's, a lot's happened in a short period of time. But we're back. Yeah, so like I was alluding to before, just play zombies when you get the game because there's nothing worse than getting shot by somebody that's got a really good scope when you just got iron sights. Not about it. <laughs> <laughs> just play zombies. It's fun though, yeah. There's like a like a new kind of boss. Um, they got new dogs. It is honestly, um, it's really cool. I don't I don't really want to spoil it for you, but they they play like a cutscene when you first download it. And since you you're like literally downloading it now, I'm gonna hold the suspense and not spoil it for you. But it's it's cool. They have thank you. I think they, especially as somebody that you said that you like the the story of zombies. I think they I think this is a uh, I guess this is probably the I mean, the closest you're going to get to like a story arc with the zombies. It's very cool. But yeah, so it's like the first map from World at War where they just have the bot. Well, it's the map that just had the box in the downstairs and it was like the building. Um, It was like the two story building. So it's that map. But then there's like an outside and there's also like like a building, like a compound that you can get into. And then so there's like an anomaly 
And once you go into the anomaly, it's very cool because it's kind of like, it turns to like a purple haze. I think, like I said, it's kind of like when you phase in like the Titanfall universe or in other video game universes, when you like phase to a different dimension and like there's like these jellyfish. It's really cool. It's really cool. So then there's also this thing called Exile, which I think happens every like five rounds. You have an opportunity. I think you have an opportunity to do it around 10 and an opportunity to do it every sequential five rounds after that. And I guess I don't really know what it does. I don't. I think I did it the first time, but then I don't really remember what happened after that because I've only I've only played three rounds at this point. Only three rounds of zombies. So you've only gotten around three. No, no, no. I've only I've only done it three times. Okay. Like I think the okay. first time I don't know. I think we probably got to like fifteen or so. And the second time I went solo, and I got to like round nine. And then the third time. I meant to try to do it. So like it is, it's not, it's not hard to figure out how to like do it solo and do private matches, but it is not as intuitive. Like it doesn't feel as intuitive as like the menu design. I think, I don't really know why, but it's like, you have to like click over to private instead of, so like basically like if you just hit zombies and then hit play zombies, it'll like pretty much just put you in like the multiplayer. So like if you're not trying to do that and you're just trying to like do like a private match with like your party or only like two people or like you're just trying to go at it solo, you have to like you have to go to the private screen. It's, it, I mean like it's not a big deal. It just feel it just doesn't feel as intuitive. Like you have you have to like think about it. Like how do I get there again? Is there a rank system now for for zombies? So like as somebody that's played three times, I will say that your it's like your multiplayer rank. Uh, so like I think like a, in one match I was like rank nine and then I was like rank fourteen by the end of it and then what was I gonna say there was something else oh so there's also like a like you get an LBRB it's like a new thing like in previous games they've had like the gumballs and like things like that this one's it's it's the LBRB there's like one that, like the LBRB where you just like place a mine and then if a zombie walks through it it blows up but like if a train of zombies walk through it like it does like a, it does like a pretty like substantial amount of damage to a train there's also like the frozen one um which like if there's like zombies around you just like hit the lbrb it like freezes them for like a second or two and then there's a third one that i just unlocked and i think that lets you phase kind of like go into like another dimension for like a hot and just run away i think so um but i think it like it only lasts like two or three seconds like if you're in like a spot It'll help you, but I also, I think that you have to, in order to get certain items, I think you have to be like a certain rank. Cause after the last time I played it, like one of the things like after the match it said, or you can now have the monkeys. Like it's like an equipment that I unlocked. Oh, I love the monkeys. It's the ones that you throw and distract mm-hmm. zombies, right? Yeah. I love those. Those are cool. I'm, I'm really excited um, because it feels like you're kind of like playing homage to like the old zombie maps. Probably my favorite is Kino, and then second is Derice, and I would mm-hmm. love to have them. I'd love to see Derice. Like if that if that was a like a, a paid DLC, I would totally front the cash for that. I'm I'm not really as interested in the multiplayer, to be honest, and I'm really un like I'm really uninterested in the campaign. I I personally thought the the Modern Warfare campaign was kind of trash. Like there's like one or two missions that I liked, but I was kind of just like, yeah, this isn't isn't really doing it for me anymore. But so, I mean, I don't know. I just have to see uh, what people say about this campaign. But I mean, that's not really why I got this one in particular. Do you think you're going to do the campaign? I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably give it a run through um, just because it's Treyarch and and I've completed the campaign for Black Ops 1 and 2. Um, I feel like I would just be wrong to not do, you know, Black Ops 3 as well. I just forgot that there was a third one. Uh, mm, yeah, I, know, and the, I didn't play that campaign. I don't think I played the second campaign either. I did play the first Black Ops campaign. That shit was dope. What are the numbers mean, Mason? <laughs> so what, what would this be? Would this be blop, Blops 4? Mm, blops 4? I think so. This is Blops 4. Actually, it's it's uh, Blops Cold War, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it. I'm going to call it Blops 4. We made Blops it to four. the fourth one. I like Blops 4. Yeah, I'm about the it. Fourth iteration of the title of the series. Yeah, it's cool. They they've got some fu- like the the kind of style of it, the art. It's really funky. And like I I guess it's not really a spoiler, um, but it's it's like kind of like funky, kind of like kind of like how like all zombies are kind of like 
a little bit retro-y, like 50s retro style, you know, like um, I'm blanking on an example. Like the, like Speedy Cola, like the art yeah. on it, you know what I mean? And like, it's kind of like that, like retro style. It's kind of like. Well, that's that. what we love. That's what we love. But it's like that. But then it's like all these like neon and graffiti colors. Ooh, okay. So it's, it's a very interesting art style. All right. I yeah, really right. vibe with I'm it. And staying... I, I, I vibe with it. Oh, there's also like, there's a lot of really cool things in, in this zombies that there's a map. You get like a mini map at the top. Oh wow! That's yeah, there's nice. that actually. That really helps because like one like the the one that I did solo, I was really trying to save my cash so I could open up the map, and I like wasn't buying a second gun, and I like totally <laughs> ran out of ammo in like the worst spot like twice. But like on the mini map, it like shows you which this is also something new that they have. You can like run over to the ammo caches, caches, and it's like two fifty, and it refills your your gun ammo. So I don't know if they've had that in the previous one. But like you can just go and grab grab some ammo whenever you need it, which is awesome. That sounds amazing, man! I can't wait to to get my hands on it now, and hopefully I can play that after this. We record this podcast episode, although that's very optimistic. Yeah, I mean, it might. Like I said, mine, I think mine's like an hour and a half. I mean, it's like a hundred gigabytes. So yeah, I'm actually. How's your how's your storage doing on your on your PlayStation Four? It's all right. Um, I I really do like using disc. I like using disc because it it really keeps me it keeps me humble. I'm I'm at a I'm at a weird spot where I've got <laughs> I've got like 150 gigabytes left on my old box. So I think that's it. I think I'm capping out then because on your old Xbox. On, on my Xbox right now. Yeah, and I so I have like the the 100 gigabytes on the X phone itself. And then I have a terabyte external hard drive. And that Whoa. only is, that Where only did is you get that? I just bought it for like 60 bucks on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I bought this one from Staples. Okay. So it was just like one of those external hard drives that you like just put a like micro USB in or whatever. And- uh, yeah, it's like a USB. So like the one thing that I really like about Xbox is it has, or the, the previous Xbox one is it had a lot of usb ports to it oh so, yeah so I, yeah i was just able to plug one in the back and i like just keep it on top of the xbox and it has like never been an issue i've probably had it for like close to two years now i can just pretty much download like whatever game i want but yeah i'm i'm kind of at the point where it's like i don't know if i really want to undownload a game i have this like weird game that i got for free and it's like something sonic so I don't really know what that is, but I've never played that. So like, I could I could unload, undownload that if I wanted to. There's a couple other games that I've never played that I might just like that I got for free that I might just undownload. But yeah, my storage management is uh, I'm gonna have to look into that if I if I don't get a new system soon. Yeah, that's important. Always keeping an eye on your storage, on your consoles, or just you know having like a long term plan for for how you're going to use it and just being realistic you know yeah i'm definitely i'm definitely at a weird spot but i also i feel like i have some unfinished business like i kind of i kind of alluded to i guess it's just like me in my head i'm like i want to wait till 2021 to get the new console but i i have like one or two rpgs that i haven't finished and i feel like i just got to get that done I gotta get that done first. Uh, like I'm, I'm currently like, there's this game that I bought a couple of months ago that I'm, I'm like really into. I don't know if I've talked about it on the pod. I'm kind of just like, it's kind of like a game for me. I'm like, really, Blake has games for himself. Just like he doesn't game. talk about it on the pod. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I really, I let's keep that sacred. We should like, let the fans email us about it. You know, yeah, like, yeah. We want to know. Let your speculation. Let your speculation yeah. Go. Do you have any games that you you play that you don't talk about on here? Any games that I play that I don't talk about on here? Let's see. Not that I can think of off the top of my head, but I'm sure there something might come up. You know, something that that I'll, I'll keep say I'll, I'll want to keep to myself. I'm oh, sure. Dude, I I just love it if like honestly like. I didn't know, and like your family didn't know, and you were just like a pro wee bowler. 
<laughs> That's so <laughs> random. Or something, something obscure like that. Just really good at Wii Bowling. <laughs> Dude, I really like that Mario Tennis game. I've been eyeing it for a while, but I, I haven't pulled the trigger. Is it on the Switch? Yeah, this, yeah. And I saw that Best Buy was having a sale, or, or Target, I believe. It's like buy two games, get one free. I don't know. I would I would like a few Switch games. I want to. I was also looking at that Dragon Quest game. Yeah, I think you were telling me about that last week. Dude, you know, I love Dragon, Dragon Quest. Dragon I just I didn't pull the trigger because my you know my mind said is elsewhere with the next gen, and I just yeah I I know I wouldn't be able to get I wouldn't be able to give those games the time and and attention that they deserved. So would you mind giving me like a, I think I asked this last week, would you mind just giving me like another like quick rundown of like the Dragon Quest games? Because I feel like I, I feel like I really don't know very much about them. So would this be like the newest one that you're, you're looking at? Like when did it, did it come out recently or? Yeah, let me be very specific, Pacific for you guys. Um, Dragon Quest, the latest and the greatest. I think it's called um, Dragon Quest X dra- or Dragon Quest Ten. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of things right now that are coming out that are like like um, like single letter things. We've got the Xbox Series X. Gotcha. Series X, Dragon Quest X, the iPhone X, the iPhone XX, the iPhone Eleven, iPhone Eleven Pro, iPhone Eleven VR, iPhone A B C D. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Blake's rant. <laughs> the game that I've had my eye on is Dragon Quest Eleven: Echoes of an Elusive Age S Definitive Edition. Gotcha. And yeah, it's just the eleventh iteration of this game. It's on the Switch, so it has like these great graphics. Um, it's just this really fun RPG that I've played, you know, since way back. So you've played other Dragon Quest games, then? Yeah, and it's Do really they all kind of have like their own storyline, or? Yeah, they they all kind kind of have their own storyline, and they're just all so like intrig. You can't, you don't know what to expect with every new Dragon Quest game. Because the story is just always so different. There's always so much to do. And it's just really one of those games that you have to play for yourself. Is it like a fantasy RPG then, kind of? Yeah. What is it? What's the combat like? Is it is it just like a button masher, or is it like a no. turn-based combat? It's like uh, you fight with like monsters, and you like build up your ability, your abilities. It's very simple, but it's also complex at the same time. And I know, I know that's a paradox but no yeah definitely like the like it can be like very chill and then have like a lot of like things that you have to like keep in the back of your mind and able to like play effectively you know i feel like a lot and of it, yeah like, and explore it yeah it's a it's just a world to explore and they really they really do a good job of bringing you into the story it also has a story tied into it dude i i feel like now that i'm just thinking about it I think I've got a, I think I've got a couple games on my Xbox that I haven't played yet. I think I mentioned on the pod that I like downloaded Assassin's Creed Three, and I, I haven't played that yet. So maybe maybe I'll have to take a little bit. That's a, little, a gem. Yeah, a little bit of a break from from Pokemon and, and check that out. But yeah, so I, I think I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm probably gonna have to take the mo or make them take these next couple weeks and make the most out of being with my xbox because i'm going to be traveling a lot over like the next month month and a half and i'm only going to have my switch so i'm definitely there's definitely going to be a point where i'm going to be and i kind of like know in the back of my head i'm like i'm definitely going to need to get another game for my switch and i think i think i mentioned last week i'm thinking about getting it's called red lantern it's like an indie game where you're like, yeah you did you did mention that last week red lantern there's another one that I'm thinking about. It's called Cloud Punk. Cloud Punk. Yeah, it's like an it's an indie cyberpunk kind of game, quote unquote. And you just like you're like a from what I've seen like gameplay, from what I've seen um, in like the stuff that they advertise in 
and they're like trailers like you're like a the de- like a delivery service kind of guy but it's like semi-legal and um, i think but you're a delinquent yeah you are a, a straight up well i think like i'm sure that it like starts off and you kind of like you're just like i'm sure it's one of those things where it's like oh like don't look at the box like just deliver it like don't ask any questions and i'm sure yeah. it's gonna like you're gonna see whatever it is and you're be like oh <laughs> i can't do this but who knows maybe not have you have you seen the trailers for the new cyberpunk i have not i i just saw that on the playstation store and yeah. that is that where you've seen like advertisements for it on the microsoft store no so so cyber so this is i actually learned this recently cyberpunk so there is like a cyberpunk game that is coming out but cyberpunk itself is actually a genre really so the it's a genre of video game it's a genre of storytelling slash sci-fi so a cyberpunk game is specifically a or well the the genre of cyberpunk specifically tells a story about a dystopian future okay but it focuses on like the day-to-day life of the lower class and like the people or like the quote-unquote normal people and like the daily tropes and like the things that like that they don't take for granted like so it's, it's kind of like a commentary on like what would happen if like the poorest person in your society in like a cyberpunk dystopian future had like all of their biological needs met. Like they had like a roof over their head. They, but they like had to, like if, if they made money, it was like all like disposable income kind of thing. And like all their like biological needs, like food and water and shelter were like taken care of. But like in a dystopian future where you have like technology that is like, I guess unchecked and like maybe a government, a corrupt government or something like that. Like what would your world be like? I guess is kind of what that genre is. It kind of sounds like life now a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, um, like, like there's so many things that could be considered like a cyberpunk, like the, the book and movie ready player one is like technically like a cyberpunk game, which I, or no, I'm sorry, not a cyberpunk. It's like, that is an example of the genre. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen the movie. Not too familiar with what happened, but it was pretty good. Yeah, you should check out the book, man. There's, well, it's like a book and a movie, and it's like it really kind of talks about the the world of like VR and like it's kind of like in a society. It, honestly, like I actually I wanted to bring this up a couple of weeks ago because I was like, like man, this like really kind of feels like today a little bit. Um, it's so in the in the world of like Ready Player One it's like a dystopian future, but everybody has access to this like VR world, um, like augmented reality, uh, like virtual reality world that you can like, cause like fully customize your body, like to where like, or your character so that people could see you however you want to present yourself. And they like, there's like a corrupt government and it's, it's a struggle of power between like a, a corporation and like a group of nerds and uh, not to spoil that, but the nerds win and the corporation loses. Um, and it's it's actually really fucking cool. If you have watched the movie and you were like, oh, that's cool, you should check out the book. If you are somebody that likes like the stranger, like the things they talk around, like stranger things and like 80s, like not, I think it's like 80s and 90s like nerd culture, like you were going to, I mean, I, I personally don't get into that that much but you would love this book and it is very cool because like in it the the main character he like has like this scheme so there's like this it's kind of fucked up um and it's kind of like it it kind of really like kind of feels like it's like hidden home or like today where it's like i really hope that like this isn't the future of like gaming but basically there's like a corporation and they will front you money uh like in like a loan type of way but it's like the, it's not, well, it, it's money that like is then for like spent on the in-game currency, which is used for like skins and like cosmetics and things like that. Right. But then if you can't pay them back, you become an indentured servant. 
and you like work to get like XP and stuff and like everything that like you get then goes directly to them. And it's kind of like a, like an indentured servitude kind of thing. So that's what happens if you like get in debt to that corporation. And basically like the main antagonist, like he like breaks in and becomes like an indentured servant, but then he like wired money to like release him at a certain date. But then he like, he ended up breaking out and that's kind of like, what sets the like the the, the final time. the final act in motion, I guess to, to say. But it's very interesting because like there are a lot of things in gaming that are becoming like increasingly cosmetic and increasingly like, oh like I can spend ten dollars on this kind of thing. And if like that like if that like goes unchecked, like it's very easy to see how somebody could like that that has like those kind of problems that could just like fall down like a rabbit hole. And For sure. And especially like if, if for some reason, I I mean, hopefully like this doesn't happen, but like, let's say like there's another like global pandemic, you know, like that may, they were, may very well become our reality. You know I mean? As far as like the actual virus, it was like the pan- pandemic goes like COVID-19 is, is not that deadly, but like, if it was more deadly, like, especially to people our age, you know, I mean, our whole world would be online. Like, so, I mean, so much of our world right now is online. That it yeah. really kind of feels like, I mean, yeah, like if that's your only like, form of expression is like packs and skins, you know. That's scary. It could be scary. Man, that sounds like something out of a Black Mirror episode. Yeah, and that is the cyberpunk genre. <laughs> but, I th- yeah, like that's pretty much the whole, the whole genre of cyberpunk is like, Black Mirror, Black Mirror dystopian type things. But when put into a video game form, it can be very interesting and intriguing because I could imagine as video games, like, like we said, as a medium, you get to do a lot of things that you can't do in, or will you, I mean, like you have control. So you, you take ownership of the story and you can yeah. like customize your actions and, and appearances. And like in the new cyberpunk game, for example, I think you can completely change your body, like every part of it. Like if you want to have a drill for an arm or a gun for an arm, I think you can do that. And I think like you can like fully customize your, your junk and stuff too. And I think they have like all kinds of options from like binary to non-binary and everything in between. <laughs> and I think I, I, I'm very interested to see how that plays out, but it, it can be, it can be very depressing um, if you, if you I mean, if you're susceptible to, to that kind of things, because it does sometimes feel a little bit dystopian, a little bit too surreal. Yeah. I feel like I had a, but, oh, but you know, like you just kind of stay positive. You know, most of the, you know, I really don't think that we're going to end up in a dystopian future because there are so many stories and so many mediums that are like, this is what could happen that like, you just got like, don't be fearful of technology, but you got to be optimistic and you have, to yeah. be, you have to be mindful as well. It's a, it's a great tool. And I feel like now more than ever, being in, in closed, you know, you bring in a good point of, of having to use this medium to communicate. Um, now more than ever, where I feel like some people are getting tired of, of screens and, and just having to use this stuff all the time. And it's pushing people to like, just do other things besides use technology. And I think that's it's good. I feel like this is having sort of an opposite effect on some people. And um, I'd, I'd like to promote that too. I'd, I'd like to promote just getting away from like the video games and the technology and taking a break from all that stuff and, you know, working on your posture, yeah. making sure, making sure that, <laughs> you know, you don't have that neck, your phone, what is it called? Phone neck or something. Oh dude, I still got that. I to, well, I yeah. don't have like that neck thing, but like my back is totally messed up from being hunched over a laptop all day i got a standing desk um but you know that i mean that only works if you stand <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you just got to be it just starts with being conscious about these things yeah definitely. and um and we can raise consciousness about them yeah absolutely um and yeah yeah i like what you were saying like definitely i mean i personally like have been sometimes Actually, like recently, I I mean, we've mentioned this before. I've been feeling like burnt out on video games, you know, like I feel like it's just like the only thing that I have. So 
I just want like some other things like new things, new experiences. And I think a lot of people want that as well. So for sure, I think this has also really changed the way I, I see them. Um, and like, cause I definitely, like I have a lot of friends that live all over the country and that's really the only, this is really the only thing that we can do together. Right. Like a group of people. Like I've got a friend out in Phoenix and a friend in Chicago and we're pretty close and we like playing. It, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it's hard to find time to, to sit down and play. I mean like three people, but like, I mean like in three different time zones, you know, but it's nice that we have that option. However, I think that in the future, for example, like when New York opens up, like I'd much rather do something with you than play video games with you. Right. You know, and I think that that's something like important to knowledge. Like you should never like sacrifice real person experience to, to be able to play video games. Cause they're going to, you know, they're always going to be there. Right. Late at night when you're done hanging out in the day, the video games will be there waiting yeah, to be and, played. And you know, sometimes it's easy to feel like you're wasting, wasting time and wasting your life. And if you feel that way, take a, take a break. You know, there's so much to experience. I mean, even like, taking a road trip and like going to a city an hour away is, you know, if you have a friend that's willing to do that with you or just like, it can be in like the smallest things. Like I'm, I'm personally really excited to be able to check out um, some museums in New York that I couldn't afford um, to pay the entry cost for. And I'm, I'm really pumped for that when things open back up. That sounds exciting. I love going to museums in the city. It's always fun. I, I like going out and getting in, in nature and just being, going for hikes there's tons of great spots out here near the city and yeah get get out more and do more of those because i i really miss that i miss being outside i like uh just getting on the on the amtrak or on like the Mm lirr just going up um and going to visit a town that's like upstate and just seeing like what's out there going for a hike seeing kind of nature they have yeah definitely it's fun just exploring i think that's that's always it, it's like inherent in our nature i think if you can explore you you you'll find that you're actually exploring yourself in a way and i think that's i mean that's a lot of that just like curiosity like human curiosity and, and just wanting to explore is a lot of people's favorite parts about video games so if you mean if you take that i mean if you're struggling to, to find new things just be like hey like what is around me that i could do and I mean, I personally, I like to use, I like to use Google. It's a great tool. I'll say <laughs> top things to do in this city or top things to do in that city or things to do on a rainy day or things to do outside and in whatever state that you live in, you know, yeah. there's, there's just so many resources available to you. State parks are awesome. Something, something really not to, not to bring this, like not to like be political at all. But when I voted on my ballot, there was a bill. And it was like to continue to give Michigan state parks or to like continue to allow Michigan state parks to get revenue from the gas tax. And I voted yes. And that shit won. So state parks are state parks in Michigan are going to be well-funded in the future. And there was like a clause in that bill that said they had to like spend 25% on like new acquisition of new land, which I thought was awesome. So I mean, like, like realistically, like at that point, like you have to like save up for years before you can acquire like a new piece of land or a new park, but state parks, like if you live in a, like a place, like you pay for them in your taxes. So check out some state parks, be outside. Yeah. Our world is amazing. And just getting out there is an awesome way to just remind yourself of what we have and what we're all fighting for with climate change and how if we don't protect our shit we're gonna end up in a cyberpunk world oh yeah <laughs> cyberpunk man i now you're making me want to check out that game some more i'm gonna um, check out the trailer man it looks it looks fucking sick keanu reeves is in it really <laughs> he's one of the voice actors i kind of hope it's like not just like oh like that just that's reeves. it that sold it to be like, yeah, i gotta buy that <laughs> I'm excited for that too. I mean, I think like everybody's excited for that one. I feel like that there's a lot of hype around that game, but not to, not to feed into it too much. I think that sometimes overhype can be like a bad thing, but you know, like with games, it just takes so long to develop them. 
That's the name of the game, man, and that's kind of what they deserve, you know, for putting in all that time and effort and money into into that project. And that's what, you know, I'm just glad that we're, we're even able to, you know, have that still be a thing, you know, still have people put out games. And that's such a delicacy. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're blessed to be around some of the like, greatest games we've ever seen and the greatest, like, you know, capabilities in our households. You know, that's... Yeah, no, it's usually, like, really coming up on a new age yeah we're living through it you know it's uh it's really something and we i feel like we talk about it in some shape or form and every pod and every single sticky button spot episode yeah i mean the hype for the new console is just like i mean it's just been like ha- like four or five years in the making and all it's just so exciting the the thing that like like realistically that i'm really excited for is so like in any rpg or like any game like you know when you like walk through like a hallway or like a, like a like it does like an animation where it's like you going through like a really tight space. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I found I think I've already said this on the pod, but those those are designed like in game design. Those are designed so that you can have like a like an area that is like really easy to load, so that when you get to the like so that your game and like system have time to load the next area, which is right. Like, so I'm just really excited because like every game has those. Because it's like, like functionally, you like the game designers have to put those in games, like they have to develop them. But now with the new consoles of the next gen, like they don't have to do that. So I'm really excited to see what that's gonna be like, like just like going to like world to world and, and like big area to big area and just like the capabilities of what we're able to see. I'm just really excited for that. Yeah, that like seamlessness, that like just quick processing. Yeah, quick transition into like that's exciting, man. And I I think Xbox has a feature where it's like a really quick, oh man, what is it called? Is it like a rapid assist something along those lines where you can like quickly get back to what you were playing and like go to the home. I'm trying to remember. I can't really pin my finger on it right now, but the Xbox series, the new Xbox gen is apparently even faster than the PlayStation 5s. Yeah, I've heard that speed. too. But I'm still gonna get a PlayStation Five. <laughs> and I, yeah, it's just they they both offer different exclusives, yeah. and you know I'm just like the pool that PlayStation offers more. Definitely, I'm I'm really excited um, to check out a new PlayStation. I mean, I do have a PlayStation Two and a PSP, but I haven't haven't had a PlayStation. I haven't got a new PlayStation ever, so I'm really excited. That's exciting, man. PlayStation is just it's Sony. It's a great company. Would you invest? Would you invest in Sony stock? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look. I'd have to look at the look at their financials. Break down their at 10K. Check out their quarterly earnings reports. Uh, do some analysis. You know, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Next pod. Should you buy Sony? Oh, don't I? Don't <laughs> not buy any stocks because I say anything like I. <laughs> I do not want anybody to think that I, I am not a financial advisor and I should not be, nobody should listen to my financial advice. <laughs> I don't even know if you can buy Sony because it's not a U.S. company. It's a good point. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is traded actually on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it's ticker symbol is SNE if you were interested. And today they are $90 and 45 cents is their current stock price. Uh, it looks like just looking at their five day, looks like they've gained a couple percentages in the last five days. Looks like around November 11th, it was trading just over $85 and it's uh, gone up $5 since then. Wow. It's looking, looking like an all time high actually. 52 week high is nine dollars and ten cents which happened today yeah don't buy this stock that's my <laughs> that's my analysis <laughs> don't buy you should never buy a stock when it's at an all-time high that's crazy it just hit a high for the year uh no i mean it, a 52 well i guess that is the year but what's i think i think it's an all yeah it's at an all-time high or actually no it's not i'm sorry <laughs> look at me it's at a five-year high it looks like in two that's impressive in 2000 and for a brief time in 2001, uh, their stock price was up higher. Damn, that's crazy. I wonder why. It looks like in March of 2000, it was about $120. 124 was their all-time high, which they're coming close to them. I don't know. 
<laughs> Don't listen to me. I'm not a financial advisor. They're playing and they're playing games with this PlayStation Five release. They just the the way that they're releasing the stock is horrible. I've been I've been yeeted several times on the PlayStation Direct links on Walmart PC Richardson. And when I say yeet, I mean like I put it in my cart and I'm ready to check out and it's like nope, just it's not happening for some reason. Always. Yeah. Uh well if you if you love me to give you uh, some business and analysis on the matter, I'd love to. So what it's looking like here, it looks like the supply chain um, is disrupted because of the coronavirus, also because of the trade war right now. So it's kind of looking like it's going to be a long time before we get uh, get the supply chain back up and running. You know, I'm not a Sony executive, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a while. <laughs> it's going to be a while till we get them on the shelves and they're moving like candy. I actually, I don't know if they are going to have them on the shelves. I heard somewhere that they... They're doing, they're trying to do all digital releases. Um, so there's no lines anywhere. Well, I was reading that GameStop was going to have a minimum of two at all their retail locations on Black Friday. And maybe I shouldn't have said that on the pod because I'm decreasing my chances of getting them on Black Friday. I don't think it's just going to be out by Black Friday, though. It is, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know when this episode will come out. Well, whenever this episode comes out, chances are the world's changed and the PS5 scape has changed as well gosh hopefully it's changed (laughs) we can only speculate we can only speculate (laughs) who knows maybe maybe mr sony himself will uh will have stepped in and they made a lot of ps fines and maybe the stock will be at an all-time high who knows or maybe they start smoking the ps5 starts smoking just like the xboxes and And yeah that was was, i think that was debunked and it was all it was all vape (laughs) so if you are if you don't know what we're talking about there was a on on the release day of the xbox one there's like this uh this like clip that was going around and like went viral it's like don't buy the the xbox series x like it's smoking and it was like that was not even like the original video i guess i guess like somebody just like blew vape smoke into it oh my (laughs) and i think xbox Xbox like had like an official or Microsoft had like an official like press release via their Twitter. Yeah. I believe we have to say this, but don't blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. Wow. I feel like why would Microsoft feel the need to clarify that? Like Well, I mean like at like when I saw it, it was like it, it like legit looked like it was on fire and it had like a couple million views. So I'm sure that like it was a couple million views across like all platforms and they just had to do it. They just had, matter. had to say something like is it i mean like it really looked like it was on fire their supply chain is tight and they wouldn't allow something like that to happen yeah, i don't think it all businessy but i'm pretty sure that they have to meet uh standards and regulations set by the u.s government before they can put it out on the market and sell it to us and put it in our homes let's not talk about all the lithium ion that's present in these devices is there a lot yeah the batteries are mostly made out of lithium ion that's that's pretty highly combustible isn't it and you can do your own research on, on that substance. Yeah, Google it. That's what he said. Well, are you looking to wrap up here? Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about more. Do you wanna do you wanna s- to say anything last little beats for the episode? Keep the keeps pressing those buttons. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep pressing those buttons. <laughs> Seriously, if you guys are, uh, if you guys have listened this far into this podcast, um, we really appreciate it. Especially, like, super appreciate if you uh, checked it out when it launched. You can find us on social media at the Sticky Buttons Pod, um, and that one social media is Instagram. Sticky Buttons Pod. The Sticky Buttons Pod at gmail.com is also our email. Shoot us an email, please. Just say hi. We would yeah. love to get emails from you guys. Please, if you guys want to ask us any questions, any questions at all, at the Sticky Puttons Bod, the the Sticky Putton, the, the Sticky Buttons Pod at <laughs> gmail dot com. Uh, just shoot us an email. You know, I actually let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. So, like when I when I work, um, I have to sometimes use like the military alphabet in order to like clarify my email. Um, it's like Bravo Lima Alpha Kilo Echo. That's Blake. Um, at Mr. CFO Finance. Uh, dot IPO. Dot com. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna see if I can do that for the for this. 
Let me, let me start. Let me start over. <laughs> the sticky buttons pod at gmail.com. That's going to be Tango Hotel Echo Sierra Tango India. Indigo? India. It's India. India Charlie Kilo Yankee. Bravo Uniform Tango Tango Oscar November Sierra Papa Oscar Delta at gmail.com. That was longer than anticipated. That took a while. It's the Sticky Buttons Pod. Don't get it twisted. You listen, you're going to get lifted. Because Blake and I, yes, we gifted. Uh, yes, we about to play some Skyrim. Uh, about to get to the top of the mountain. Uh, and we always win. Uh, no, we never sin. <laughs> That's it for me. That's it for me. <laughs> what a way to end the pod.